Oh my god. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the pets that I have that you might not know about. I've been wanting to do an all my pets video for a very long time, but I just have a lot of animals and I don't wanna like rush it. So I thought it would be better to break it up in two parts. The first part being this one where we talk about all my non-arachnid pets, meaning my reptiles, amphibians. And then we will do a different dedicated video to all my tarantulas, spiders, arachnids. I do get asked questions a lot like, how is this pet? How is that pet? So hopefully this video will answer some questions. Let's go ahead and get into it because we have a lot to talk about. So I guess I should probably talk a little bit about Coco, just because you guys see her in the background of my videos a lot, but this is Coco Puff and she is a poodle mix. I adopted her when I was 21, so that was like eight years ago, and she was about a year old. She's nine now. And also, this is Poe. <laughs> he is a Shih Tzu mix. I adopted him about five years ago. When I was pregnant, I adopted him and everybody told me it was a bad idea. It probably was, but also, we're just going to move along this way. So these are actually my pea puffers. And um, yeah, I just fed them. So they are probably like still on the prowl looking for blood worms. But yeah, I still have my pea puffers in this tank. And I also have my bristle nose pleco that I've literally had for years. So this little guy right here is Rango. And he was my first reptile that I've ever owned. So I've actually had him since 2015. And like I said, he was my very first reptile and Ever since I got him, I just ended up getting more and more exotic animals. Before him, I only kept like, you know, the basic things or whatever. And I know he's considered like a basic reptile now, but he was very exotic and new to me when we first met. You guys can probably thank him for my channel because he definitely was one of the animals that really got me into watching animal videos on YouTube when I was trying to do some research around the time we got him. He's a great starter reptile if you're looking to get into reptiles this is like the best animal you could probably go with and they're really long-lived too so that was like something that really drew me to them because you know I get attached to my pets I want to have them for a long time okay so next up we have Tut my bearded dragon his claws really are not my favorite thing to deal with ever so that's why he's in a blanket but yeah he has actually gotten huge I don't know if you guys remember when I got him as a baby but he is now like an adult he has these really pretty blues in him and he's calmed down a lot this is an animal I have had to do a lot of handling with and he's still not like the best with it but he will do anything for worms bearded dragons need a lot of care despite the fact they're often painted as beginner animals I just feel like they're not at all I've had him for probably about three years now he's definitely one of my most interactive pets like this is an animal that I deal with every day <laughs> so next up i have my two small rosy boas this one is beetlejuice and this one is java so here they are and you can see beetlejuice is kind of like this black and silver black and white and then java right here is this really pretty yellow and brown and you can see that speckling under there really looks like coffee grounds but yeah so these are my two ow Dude, stop trying to eat me. These are my two rosy boas, and this one's trying to eat me. Stop it. I don't know why they're hungry. They literally just ate. Java was like trying to eat me, Eric. I felt her little teeth on me. Ow! Ow, she has me. Oh my God. Eric, can you help? Yeah. Ow, ow. Okay, so continuing the theme with rosy boas, this is Willow and she was my first rosy boa, so she's very special. And yes, this is about how big Java and Beetlejuice will get. She is full grown. How long have we had Willow? Uh, three years? Probably going on three years now. But yeah, she's kind of the colors you normally see rosy boas as. Java and Beetlejuice are a little bit more rare, but Willow is definitely my favorite one to handle. She's never bit me, but she has tried to eat Eric before. Do you see what Java did to me? I get asked all the time if I've been bit by my animals. I've never been bit by any of my spiders, but I have been bit by the snakes. A lot. Just grab him. I did just grab him. He nipped at me. I'm gonna take your hide. Come here. Come on. We're waiting for your brother. Come on. I'm not threat. I'm not threat. There's little chipmunks outside with no clue. 
Of what terror? Of what terror there is. Yeah, I just keep right. seeing chipmunks run back and forth. Just go stand right there in case I need you. Right here. Right here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I can't fix my hair. Okay. Okay, so this is Chili, and she was our first snake ever. She is a corn snake, and this is Ichabod, who was our second snake, and he's also a corn snake. So here they are, and as you see, they both look very different, but they're both corn snakes. They both act the same. Both of these monsters have bit me, mostly out of the reflex that they want to eat, but yeah, Chili, look at her. She's so pretty. We actually got her when she was like super duper tiny. I have my assistant, Mr. Tarantula Cat, here helping me, if you didn't know, but yeah. Yeah, look how big. I mean, this is, he still has his tail wrapped around me and he has just gotten huge. Like they were the size of earthworms when we got them. I love his patterning under him. Yeah, I know he is. Okay, and for the last of our snakes, we have Daisy, our spinner blast ball python. Daisy is another snake we've had since she was a little hatchling. Yeah, she's one of my favorite snakes to interact with. I've actually helped her a lot. She used to be really nervous and she still is a little nervous, but she's gotten amazing with it. Like I definitely trust her more than I trust Java right now. <laughs> Spinner Blast ball pythons actually do have the spider gene in them, which I've mentioned before, that was not something we knew at the time of purchase. She's our one and only ball python that we've ever kept. But yeah, the spider gene can cause neurological issues, which she does have a little bit of wobble. We do house her in a 40 gallon and she's out exploring like every night. So she is a pretty active ball python. I know there's like a lot of different ways to house them and stuff, but this girl, like I can't imagine keeping her in anything smaller than a 40 gallon. But yeah, so this is Daisy. Okay, so that was all the snakes, and next I wanted to show my frogs, but before we get into that, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, which is Lavoie. So this is the Core 400S, and they sent me this a couple weeks ago, and I've been trying it out and absolutely loving it. I actually worked with them last year, and they sent me a really nice purifier, so when they reached out and said they had an updated model, I jumped at the opportunity because I absolutely love their air purifiers, especially because I have a lot of sensitive exotic animals. I do have shared walls here, and it's just nice to have, you know, a purifier running at all times. It also helps eliminate different odors and so I actually usually keep it in the bedroom next to Iggy, my hamster, who we'll talk about in a minute. What I really like about this new updated model though is that it has the ability to use an app to control it. You can even change the settings on it from your phone. So I just like turned it up. And now you just hear it kick on. I actually had it on night mode this whole time. So if you didn't hear it, that's why. I really like the use of the app. And also I can do this. Okay, Google, turn the air purifier off. Sure, turning off 400S. But yeah, I really love it, and so I will go ahead and link it down below if you are in the market for an air purifier. I love this one, and this company. They offer really great products, so check them out. Okay, and now let's talk about all the frogs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you Magic Frog, who is extremely, extremely pissed off. I was trying to pick her up for the sake of this video, but she was just not interested, and that is why she looks like a giant balloon, because she has puffed herself up and filled herself up with air, and she is done with the video. Like, she said, I don't wanna have any involvement in that today. <laughs> She's looking really gorgeous. Look at her, like, bright red. You can really see why they're called tomato frogs, because she looks like a tomato. But yeah, I'm gonna stop annoying her, and we can go ahead and move on to Hypnotoad, who hopefully is in a better mood. Okay, so next up we have <laughs> Hypnotoad. And as you can see, Hypnotoad is quite the gentleman. I caught him myself about two years ago. He's been a really great pet. If you want to keep an American toad or a Fowler's toad, unfortunately, they're not really captive bred. So you kind of have to catch them yourself. And I'm actually wearing the glove because I just really don't want to get peed on. Toad skin is not as sensitive as like frogs, like magic frogs. But yeah, he has a tendency to pee on me. And he's actually quite a an active little guy too. I really recommend at least a 10 gallon for these. Even though they're smaller than the American Toad, they do like to move around. He definitely burrows. Both winters I've had him, he has hibernated for extended periods of time, literally months without surfacing, not even for food or anything like that. But yeah, during the rest of the year, he's like super active. I love having him and I totally, like look at his cute little face. Isn't he just so adorable? 
he's thinking about jumping. So I'm gonna go put him back before he does. So next we are going to talk about Trippy Toad, my smooth sided toad. However, Trippy Toad is still asleep because it is still bright outside and like most toads, he's nocturnal. I can't access Trippy Toad that well because he sleeps in his cork bark round like deep in his enclosure all day and then he comes out at night. So I will go ahead and insert footage that I'm going to take here in a couple hours when he wakes up while we talk about him now. So basically Trippy Toad has been doing great. He is a smooth sided toad. He has that bufo toxin. It's the same toxin that like the cane toad has. I have never seen him actually like use it because you can see the toxin as it comes out from the glands on him. He's never done it. Uh, it's not really common to happen, especially in captive bred toads, which I did buy him as a captive bred toad. But yeah, he eats a ton. He has grown a lot since we first got him. He was pretty large when I got him, but soon after like putting him in his enclosure, I actually had to upgrade and I had to get him a larger water dish because he really likes to soak and he outgrew that smaller one super fast. He's one of my favorite animals. Every single night I look to see if he's out yet. I really look forward to seeing him every night and giving him his worms. <laughs> he's really got a personality and that's why he's one of my favorites already. And the other nocturnal animal we are going to have to talk about now, but I'll have to take some footage tonight when she wakes up is Iggy, my hairless hamster. Igor, I call her Iggy. I haven't really shown her on my channel since I got her. I mean, I've kind of shown her here and there, but I haven't really done a full update on her. I upgraded her enclosure. I upgraded her wheel. I like, she has a, a lot going for her right now. I got her when she was a baby and now she is a little over a year old, doing really well. She's definitely one of my animals that I'm most bonded to. Obviously she is, you know, a rodent and rodents are typically pretty smart. She's no exception. She's absolutely insane. She outsmarts me all the time if she wants to. And yeah, she's just incredible and been doing really well. So yeah, that is Iggy, my hairless hamster. So I do believe that is everybody who is not a spider, tarantula, scorpion, camel spider, arachnid of any kind. Everybody you typically do not see. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I have a lot of pets. Um, that's not even half of them. So <laughs> we will do an updated all my tarantulas video, which will include the spiders and everything soon. It's just going to take me a while to film and a lot of planning to do. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, Lavoie, for sponsoring another video. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not. And you won't be. Don't forget, I'm going to say this probably way too much. It's at You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. And let's get into the Patreon pet pick. 